I am Shua. And you are listening to Light Up with Shua, a weekly podcast to open our hearts and minds on a journey with me. Good morning, Lubna. Good morning. <laughs> I would like to talk to you about interfaith now. Okay. Um, what is the value of interfaith or what do you know about it? Uh, yeah, I think we're all in interfaith because we deal on a daily basis with all faiths, right? Mm. Especially living here mm. or in, here, any, where? Like in, in the U.S. Uh-huh. or uh, anytime you're living outside of your home country, if you're an immigrant, mm-hmm. then you are doing interfaith. Mm without knowing it because mm-hmm. you have to interact with all different cultures and faith but <clears throat> for me because i was traveling uh, a lot as we were growing up my father used to be in in, in the airline and every three years we would be somewhere else mm. so i i grew up with uh, buddhists with hindus mm, okay. with christians with um atheists, mm. uh, Jews. Oh, really? You name it. Nice. So. Nice. And as we had, as I said to you, you know, a lot of my parenting skills, when we were talking about parenting, I got from my parents. And the most important thing, I think they <clears throat> uh, trans into us, their kids, was that uh, human beings are the same everywhere. Hmm. They may look different, hmm. they may practice different things, but they have the same goals, they have hmm. the same feelings, they have the same uh, attitudes, mm-hmm. uh, and you view them as that, as human beings. And you want to be viewed as that, a human being. You don't want to be singled out. You don't want to single anybody out. You don't want to single yourself out. So when, especially when, you know, as I got to middle school, we were in Japan at that time. Mm. And it was a Catholic school. Living in a Buddhist country or, you Mm. know, um, uh, not an Islamic or Mm -hmm. a Christian Mm -hmm. or a... uh, so you went to different schools also? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. So I, I was living in Japan. Wow. Going to a, a Catholic school. Nice. Um, it was actually... So there were other there options a, a, of like going oh, to yeah, other schools? Oh, yeah, I could have gone to a local school. My, my, which was, what do you mean by local school? Which would be a Japanese this, school. Oh, Japanese school. Okay. Uh, right. Or I could have gone to uh, an American school. Oh, I could have gone to okay. a British school, ah. but my parents opted to put me in a Catholic school. Interesting. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it was a very good school. It was the mm. International School of Sacred Heart. Ah. And I, you know, we would. I was not diminished in any way as far as my faith is concerned because my parents really instilled uh, us to be very um, secure in our faith. What age are you talking about now? I when was you maybe were in Japan? fifteen. Okay. okay. Fourteen, fifteen, mm. around that. So, um, we would attend uh, Mass. Mm. It didn't, it did not shake me in any way. Did you like it? Did you, Uh, did you? It was interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, it was interesting and I respected it. Mm -hmm. Did you talk about it when you came home to your parents or did you process it like, okay, this was Mass and we don't have something like this. Did you attend any, were there any mosques that you were, mosques in? There, at that time Mm -hmm. there was a, I think one mosque in Tokyo where mm-hmm. we lived. Did you go there? We that? didn't go there okay. all the time. Okay, but uh, but you know my par- my father and my brothers would go for Juma. Okay, uh, Friday prayers. Friday prayers, uh-huh. uh, and at that time uh, for you know our Eid festivals, the 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 festival after the ma- the month of fasting, mm-hmm. and uh, the one for. Uh, the sacrifice of Abraham. Um, at that time, it was not normal for 
ladies to go to the mosque. So I was not going to mm-hmm. a masjid. But it did not phase me to attend mass because mm-hmm. I was not performing that ritual. Mm-hmm. I was just attending it mm-hmm. a, a, as a person of a different mm-hmm. faith, but respecting it at the same time. Okay, this is what these people How do. How did you learn to respect that? Uh, like where your was your mother telling you something like okay you have a mass today like did she we say we were anything? always taught that for, for uh, a, a Muslim needs to respect all religions oh, that's okay. what we were taught okay um, it says in the Quran also you mm. have to respect all religions mm. uh, because if we don't respect it we cannot expect that respect back mm. Mm. so um, for me it was. Just something they did. Mm-hmm. This was their way of uh, prayer. Mm. So we would attend and then we would go. So mm. and, and, and during the week they would have a, uh, a religion class. Mm. And all of us who were not Catholics would go into a world religion class. And we would uh. talk about each other's religion. Mm. That was a very... Uh, I think that was my first encounter with interfaith. I never looked at it as interfaith. Right, right. I looked at it as just another class. Yeah. But I talked a lot about my faith mm. in that class. And I remember my dad telling me many, many years later, mm. uh, when I, after I was married, mm. that when he had gone in for a parent-teacher conference, the teachers were very... Um, my who was a nun my teacher was a nun mm. she was very impressed with how secure i was in my religion oh wow okay and i uh, and i told my dad you should have told me that before <laughs> <laughs> so you could have encouraged me. Yeah. <laughs> but no yeah. but my parents never actually they never praised us to our face that way uh, and that i think was... that was a good thing I mean, they didn't discourage us, uh-huh. but they didn't say, oh, you are great or you uh-huh. are this. Or uh-huh. They never said that in, in that sense because mm. I feel that really is just an inflation of yourself. Mm. Okay. It can be perceived in the wrong way and used in the wrong way. Mm. But anyways, every holidays, mm-hmm. we would go back to Pakistan oh, okay. into the extended family. Uh-huh. And we had a, a very secure and a very close extended family mm-hmm. in the sense that uh, everybody met everybody. It mm-hmm. wasn't like, I don't want to meet you, or, mm-hmm. you know, there were no... So even if the parents had disagreement, the kids were never separated from, separated that, from, right? from, from each other. Yeah. Um, That's so very good. my cousin, and we were a very religious family. Oh. Very so religious religious means... in the sense, not that uh, rigid, mm-hmm. But in the sense that we were actively learning about our religion, mm. uh, you know, like, undergoing uh, learning the Quran, not just to read it, mm-hmm. but to understand it as well. Mm. So when my cousin would, uh, my older cousin, who was, I don't have any sisters. Oops. I only yeah. had, I have four brothers. Mm-hmm. I had four brothers. And she was like my older sister and we were very close. Mm. And um, we, we always stayed at their house when we went back to Pakistan. So she would. She had a habit of reading the Quran every day, mm. and uh, you mean for herself or loud? for herself? Okay, for herself. But she would read a small portion of it, and then she would read the translation, mm. and she would then read the explanation, and mm. we will talk about it. So it was done in a way that was like a, a story for me. So I would enjoy, or the kids who who all of us would enjoy listening to it, and I remember my. Uh, my aunt, uh, my dad's sister, or my uh, and also my mom's sisters, in the morning when we, they would wake up for the Fajr prayer, mm-hmm. they would wake us up in such a loving way that made us want to wake up and mm. perform the and prayer. And what was that? So maybe people can learn because otherwise... Uh, that, you know, like, uh, encourage us, look, look, I'm going to get up, you want to get up with me, and we'll have it fun. It was not forced. It was not forced. It was made like a natural thing. So uh-huh. they would... It, it it was like a bonding moment for me oh, with okay. my aunt or my grandmother oh, nice. or whoever. So they would like, uh, you know, it'll be fun. We'll both get up. I'll help you brush your teeth. This is when I was like seven years old, oh. six years old, you know. And it'd be fun. We'll mm. get up. Or if it was the month of fasting, mm. it would be the, the morning oh, the meal, meal. Would, because it's hard to get up at yeah. four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, the morning meal would be made fun. Uh, so you would look forward, forward to it. To the then food. all the cousins yeah. are up. And then you, it's, you know, 
So for me, it was so ingrained that I was never phased by the other religion or I was never influenced by it. I would learn from it. Like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, we yes. do something like that too. But we are different. So I would recognize the differences, but mm -hmm. I would not necessarily say, okay, you know, that one's better than mine. Okay, or okay, this okay. One. Because so, the respect aspect yeah, was there too. The respect. Which is but a very I, beautiful thing. So I, I guess you had a very interesting, interesting childhood. Also, yeah, I think it your made travels me, and um, it made me a a better, well-rounded person, I Excellent. think. Excellent. Because not everybody can have this uh, privilege or opportunity to be able to be uh, to be exposed to so many ethnicities or faiths and grow, with, you know, this way and be respecting other faiths and you know be grounded in your own. It's mm. it's a it's a very nice thing to have. I the guess. surprising thing I'll tell you, even when my dad was stationed in Abu Dhabi, which is mm. a Muslim country, mm. we still went to a Catholic school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. And why would that be? And why would he decide that? Uh, I don't that? know. I think uh, hmm. the maybe it was uh, the... Um, I mean, yeah, we have Catholic it? schools in Pakistan too. I yeah. mean, all this, the St. Mary's... Saint, and I went to St. Joseph's Saint Saint College Saint in yeah. Pakistan. Yeah. Which so. was, by then, it was not necessarily a Catholic school, but the name was still... But the school mm. is still... St. Mm. Joseph's School, which is also in Karachi, mm -hmm. is still... Yeah, and is all still, over in Pakistan, mm. I have seen so many... That's interesting. So it's just their way of teaching, maybe? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. That's right. That's very nice. Hmm. Good for people to know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to be... And for me, that was, I think, very important because my kids here are not going to a Muslim school. Yeah, exactly. So but I was grounded. able to teach them that difference that, okay, you know, you are you, uh -huh. and they are them. doesn't mean anybody is greater or lesser. Uh -huh. But you res mutually respect each other. So it means that because your brought up was so much inter cultural interfaith, so you were comfortable teaching yeah. that to your children. So, so what is so it means is there so there is a value to interfaith uh, education for definitely, uh -huh. definitely because we cannot live in a bubble. I mean, I cannot have my kids live inside my house all the time, right? Or or with Muslims all the or, time. Or with Muslims oh, yeah. all the time. It's a, and it's within a global world Muslims now. also, you have intra. You know, cultural exactly. differences. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you have to teach them mutual respect mm -hmm. and understanding. Mm -hmm. And uh, one doesn't need to be, uh, one doesn't need to show mm. that you are better than the other or mm. in any which way. Everybody is an individual mm -hmm. and everybody is following their mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I think the big if if we want to influence somebody is only through our actions. Mm -hmm. So it means then okay. So how that would this would be interesting to ask you. So you have You're a, giving me hard questions. No, but I, very I'm good, very thought pro <laughs> provoking, and very good questions. Thank you, that. thank you. I am thinking now. Okay, so your daughter is older, <laughs> and your son is uh, 18, 19? 19, 19. Just 19. Turned 19. Oh, yeah. bless him. Um, so he both, let's say, I mean, yes, they are very grounded and uh, so. in Islam, <laughs> and you think that they. So if they choose mm -hmm. somebody other than <laughs> <laughs> you knew that it's coming, if they choose someone other than who is uh, following a Muslim faith, how would you see that, or how would you act or react to it? Because they're in America, and everything yeah, happens here. Yeah. Anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen. Anywhere. So are you? Are you? Are yeah? Even I mean, people come from all over. Mm -hmm. How would I react? Have I you don't ever know. thought about it? I have thought about it. Mm -hmm. I have. As far as culture is concerned, mm -hmm. I. We have told both of us have told them that. Doesn't matter. Culture means what? Like, what do you mean by culture? Like, uh, somebody could be from India or uh, oh, okay. could be from, uh, you know, the Arab world mm -hmm. or Europe, mm. or, as long as they are Muslims. Okay, that's where I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, it's not easy. I know. Um, I, I appreciate your honesty, yes. and that's what I want us to learn from uh, your being honest. That's how it is. Um, you want... Whoever they are from whichever country or culture, mm -hmm. but as long as they are a Muslim. Muslim. You know, I've tried to show them and tell them that marriage is not a joke. Mm. 
Good, you have already told that too. Because marriage... <laughs> it's not a joke and it's not it's such not a, a easy thing to do. It's not a joke and it's not easy. Mm-hmm. And it is not just about you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are extending your family mm-hmm. and you are going to be having kids. This is for both, for the this boy for and the girl. Oh, okay. for both of them, yeah. yes. I tried not to have different rules for them. Mm-hmm. As a gender. As a gender. Yeah, like, okay. But there are, uh, my daughter sometimes gets upset about it. That he, I, I said, well, you have to realize there are differences. Mm-hmm. And what are they? Uh, like, f- for example, if my daughter is going, my son is going to the University of Maryland, right? Okay. Sometimes he comes here by train and he goes by train. Mm-hmm. My daughter commutes to New York City and mm-hmm. comes back, or commutes on the train. Yeah. But if he is going from here to back to UMD um, at 8 o'clock at night and reaching there at 11, 30, 12 o'clock, I'm not that concerned. Mm. I'm you, still concerned, okay. but I'm not that concerned mm-hmm. that he's going to be there alone. He's going to take Uber alone. Or mm-hmm. he's going to, but if it is her, mm-hmm. I would be concerned. going berserk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because there are these are natural differences. Uh-huh. And for her safety. For her safety. Really, and, yeah. So these are the kind of things. And she, she I think she understand. realizes it, mm-hmm. but she has to argue, of course. Mm-hmm. But these are the only, But as far as rules are concerned, I had the same rules mm-hmm. for them. Mm-hmm. So if she knows her uh, self-defense or she knows how to defend herself, would you be more comfortable? Um, I don't know. You don't know? Maybe I would be, but, uh, you know, I always t- tell my kids, even my son. What are you concerned about? Like, aren't, you, aren't we all uh, concerned he, about the safety of their physical safety first? Yes, that, of course. Uh, nothing safety. happens to them. But otherwise... Um, Especially nowadays with all the Islam. For my, yeah. my my daughter covers, you know, she wears yeah. the hijab. So that so is a concern, right? It's, Somebody it's more doesn't concerning, attack like her. when they're in New York City, when mm-hmm. she was going to university there, mm-hmm. um, there were attacks on some Muslim girls mm-hmm. because of their hijab. Yeah. And so we were concerned. concerned. We did talk to the university security, and mm-hmm. they did say if your daughter is leaving late and she's concerned, we will give her a ride. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, those kinds of safety yeah. issues, I would not necessarily have for my son. Mm, obviously, unless he has a beard and... <laughs> but the, even, the tip, well, even, tip beard you know, is not an issue, actually. But yeah, nowadays, everybody has beards. Yeah, you know, that's it's true. an in thing. Kind yeah. Of. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. Um, so... I don't know if we? I answered your question. Well, yeah, I don't know. Where were we? Um, <laughs> did I get digress. distracted? Yeah, we have been digressing on... Um, Okay, so you didn't have you have same uh, same rules for both. Um, mm-hmm. You don't uh, from oh, you the religion. Oh, I marriage. was asking. Yeah, marriage, yes. marriage, marriage. So, so the marriage. Right. Uh, so if you want them to have to choose uh, a partner who is culturally, they can be different, but faith wise or religion wise, it just it makes it makes easier. It easier. Okay. Yes. Okay. So if they say, "Well, mom, it's our issue, my problem. I have to deal with it. I can manage." Ultimately, it, it is their life. Yeah. So they would be dealing with it more than you. Yeah, but right? you know, I have experience on my side. Okay. It's it's hard enough dealing within your religion <laughs> and within your culture. Exactly. That's Why true. do you want to make your life even yeah, more? That's you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Is there uh, only the life that they're living is harder, or do you have that uh, any, any other extended yeah. extended thought in that that oh you uh, that God wouldn't be happy with you? Is there anything of that nature? Now I'm being a little more blunt with you. I won't be asking this to everybody. <laughs> Maybe I should. I will be. Hello, th- everybody. <laughs> well, uh, to an extent, yes. Uh-huh. Because in the Quran, uh, uh-huh. God does say that, you know, ma- marry believing. Uh-huh. Believing men, men and, and women. women. So, so it means then you think that if... Um, believe when I, you say believing, believing in the one, one God. Hmm. Yeah, so the people of the book can yes. be married to, but yes. then there is another. I, I, I won't yeah, get into that discussion. Yeah, that's uh, there will be a longer uh, discussion, yeah. and uh, I don't think I want to get into that. That yeah. will be separate. Uh, episode we can talk for, about it on a personal level. Yeah, <laughs> no, we, we can have a different discussion on a different podcast. Okay, okay. Um, episode, I guess. Yeah. So, all right. So, all right. Uh, that answers. 
to quite an extent something that you that what that's what you believe and do you find your children agreeing with that i think so yes mm-hmm. have I, they... i have not had a pushback okay okay that they are okay and they would be i think they have re- realized because mm-hmm. they have seen here mm-hmm. you know around yeah. us people have so they ha- they realize that it is difficult mm. um to have uh, inter uh, faith marriages yes. okay okay hmm interesting so are you going to choose partners for them or i tell them to go find somebody <laughs> <laughs> okay which is good so you are uh, i'm fine with either way okay as okay. long as uh, you know they choose uh, well wisely. i shouldn't say as long but <laughs> after you know i've told them choose wisely because you have mm-hmm. to live with that person yeah. hopefully sure. for the rest of your life mm-hmm. yeah that's good i like that hopefully yeah and try you know i appreciate know. that <laughs> that's because that's an honest it's answer it's realistic right yes that you is. have to be realistic yeah because you can think whatever but mm-hmm. you never know exactly yeah um i guess uh, anything else you want to say about interfaith that um, well, interfaith living now. in america yeah. yeah interfaith now i guess uh-huh. is very important to be as i said before you know we all do interfaith mm-hmm. especially living in america mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. We, uh, but um it's more important now to engage mm-hmm. much more actively mm-hmm. why uh, to increase our understanding of each other to in, to uh, you know to realize that as i said before that all human beings are the same mm-hmm. with the same goals mm-hmm. with the same concerns mm-hmm. uh, with the same uh, um, aspirations mm-hmm. uh, So what will it do? So Basically, what it will do, being, it will, what, being interfaith will help. What, the biggest what? thing interfaith does is is dispel the notion of the other. Ah, that's you know? what. Okay. So when we break down that barrier, mm-hmm. then I it is not that easy for me to hate you and for you to hate me. Okay. When we build friendships, mm. we build understanding and mm. uh, mutual respect and encouragement and mm. all that. Mm. So it will be. more comfortable to live doesn't matter who the other right as i you know as i said when i as we were growing up because i grew up in a multicultural multi faith mm-hmm. environment most mm-hmm. of the time i did not see it i now i when i meet people i don't see them as a jew or a christian or a hindu or, mm-hmm. i see them as a person ah, and their faith more. is secondary okay so that's how it should be okay i really appreciate that that's very good 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 lesson Thank you. All right, so I guess we come to an end. Um anything else you want to say about well, uh, want... youth or uh, like how to for you know for Muslims to learn about that they should get more involved in interfaith activities? Do you they think should, they should yeah? get more involved. Do you involved, find uh... them not as active in in your community or um or do you I think they're learn they're mm-hmm. starting to realize they need to be more active mm-hmm. or more proactive. Yeah. um but as far as the youth are concerned i would say this to the adults that do not un- underestimate them okay sometimes we think they don't they cannot learn or they yeah. don't know uh-huh. or they will not understand uh-huh. but they are they are good kids so from there i have another question quickly before we end uh do you think that uh some parents might stop their children because they would think oh their own faith will be affected or influenced or diluted if yeah, they we project our own insecurities yeah. on our kids okay so first of all we have to deal with our own insecurity when you okay. plan to become a parent address your insecurities and you know face them mm. why are you insecure mm. is it because of your faith or mm-hmm. is it because of whatever else <clears throat> Mm-hmm. uh and, and try to overcome them and do not hide your insecurities from your kids because that will show them that you have to face up to it uh in an intelligent way as we discussed before mm-hmm. <laughs> what is intelligence mm-hmm. you know um that's basically it Fa- you know face your teach yourself to be an upright human being 
uh, one with courage, one with integrity, one with uh, uh, wisdom, mm. and project that on your kids. Do not project your insecurities on your kids, and ex- and expect the same from that. You know, whatever has happened to you would happen to them, mm-hmm. because uh, they are. If they are born here, they are not you. Mm, exactly. If you're especially an immigrant. An immigrant. Yeah, that was my was, uh, question or thought was about immigration. Like you're an immigrant, um, uh, you, but your children are born and mm-hmm. brought up here. Um, and being a female, being part of community, you are very active, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you participate in your uh, community as mm-hmm. a Muslim, mm-hmm. but you do participate in inter- interfaith activities. Mm-hmm. You're a big part uh, of... Uh, Sisterhood, Sisterhood of Salam and Shalom, mm-hmm. which is Jewish and Muslim women. Um, and I am sure you do other things. So that's mm-hmm. that's good. I mean, I wanted to uh, bring this aspect of uh, immigrants who are contributing in the United States, in your own communities. You are building bridges. You are uh, understanding yourself mm-hmm. and, you know, teaching others. Yeah, I mean, about, we, you know, we're not just... Uh, I teach at the Sunday School... In, uh, in, in a mosque, uh, in, in an Islamic center? In an Islamic center. Okay. And uh, uh, I deal with uh, domestic violence issues mm. Mm. Uh, in, in, in the sense that uh, if somebody needs help, I can direct, maybe counsel them a little bit. I'm not a counselor, but, mm-hmm. you know. I can counsel or, or direct them where to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do deal with... Um, uh, outreach for the domestic violence people, okay. organizations Excellent. to come into our communities and talk about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and recently, we've going back to the interfaith. Recently, mm-hmm. we have started. Uh, it was started by my friend um, after her husband passed away, and now we've all kind of caught on to it. Is that every month we um, gather funds and we. Uh, buy essential items for homeless people, and we deliver that. And we make. And uh, you're all Muslims. Doing we're this all together? Muslims because okay. we want to show the community not not just show, but we as as individuals contribute. we want to do it, but we want to con- contribute to the society mm-hmm. we live in, not just to Muslims. Mm-hmm. That you know, because a person in need is a person in need. Doesn't, doesn't matter who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so we we have started making uh, uh, sandwiches and food and delivering it to the shelters and whatnot. So, uh, and that's and that's another way of showing to our kids how to engage more so in interfaith activities. Mm. And um, where you live, you should you should take, contribute. Yeah, and you have it, to. You own it. You know, this is your country. This is your exactly, country. and you gain so much from it. So you have yeah. to give yeah. back. Yeah. So it's good to be immigrant. It's good to be immigrant. (laughs) This country has provided me a lot of opportunities that I might not have had otherwise. I don't know. Uh Maybe I would have, but Uh God wanted me to be here to do whatever I'm doing. I think you you are needed here. Uh, You're doing good. Um, And I hope uh, we all, immigrant or not, but whatever we are, um, wherever we live, uh, we should think about, I guess, other human beings Mm -hmm. and serve. Yeah. yeah, we cannot live in ourselves. Yeah, that's true. Anyways, thank you so much. Thank you again. My pleasure. <laughs>